What up my freaks, Rowena Sensite here with part, I uh, want to say, 7 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Malachi McKyson Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, a couple of glorious battles, first as the gyro bombers and gyrocopters, our fledgling air force uh, set to their uh, maiden of flight and uh, did rout and obliterate the armies of Malice Darkblade. His faction is pretty much done for with only two settlements remaining and not really much in the way of armies either. Norska is also in pretty darn bad shape as Snorri Granite Hand leading the Slayer Tide has continued to, uh, well, slay his way through all of the Norskan territories. And uh, I'd say we got rough, roughly half, maybe a little bit more than half of it in our hands already, as long as we're not counting uh, this portion that we started with or the uh, uh, the Gormadni tribe all the way over there. Uh, it looks like it's stuff and we are in a new turn so we got moves to make uh let's begin stachel jarbeard all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to send you to grab blackrock there's basically no defenders here or at the very least the defenders are so weak that we should be able to auto resolve this and i mean we could siege it but it's a weak garrison and we have six artillery pieces let's face it they're not gonna have any chance so you're gonna go here and how much is this worth yes yeah, decent amount for us to uh, loot and occupy it. Uh, continue siege. We gotta put Bernie in here as well. So let's merge these units and delete this one dwarf warrior unit and pop you in, sir. Both the Grim Delvers and the Quarrelers are going to leave this army. They do work quite well here, admittedly, but uh, well, they'll still need to go. I do kind of like the idea of the Thunderers with Grudge Rakers, but uh, we'll need to replace them eventually with uh, uh, with Iron Drakes. Anyway, for now, I'll resolve this. It's just not worth fighting. And even then, the damage is relatively small. We'll loot and occupy it for ourselves. Ooh. I mean, I guess we could... Ah, oh, wait. Were you just at the edge of your range? Sacking will give us twice as much money. Hmm. I am tempted by it. Sorely tempted. Once again, we are trading it, so we don't really care about what happens to it. And uh, there's a decent chance that uh, Boris can't even really build it up. It's just that we can't really leave it here. Uh, all right, fine. Second, I'm going to hope this isn't just at the... I feel like it's just at the edge of his range. And... Yeah, it was indeed just at the edge of his range, meaning he won't be able to take it next turn. All right. Uh... I mean, I guess we could leave it, hit the Blighted Grove, and then come back to it. Ah, that 2,000 gold. It really, uh, it really tempted me. But oh well. Uh, Malachi, you're gonna hit Kalichi here. And the thing about Malachi is he can move further, and we need him to move now, because the uh, little... Uh, uh, the little tribe of beastmen that appeared there last episode. We're going to need to destroy them before they take out all the territories that are unprotected and that we gifted to our uh, our Ursonite friends. Uh, another stonemason. Uh, do we have room for another stonemason in our... Ooh, kidnapper. Good, Malachi. Good. Uh, <laughs> do we have room for another stonemason in this, in this little uh, army? Uh, you don't have a stonemason. Though I'm not sure it can go on here. Oh, actually, it can. Oh, Rika, you certainly don't need a stonemason. Uh, we have another stonemason on Snorri Granite Hand. We have another one on Felix. Why do you guys all have stonemasons? Uh, stonemason for you. And you already have a stonemason. All right. Well, we'll give the Felix one to one of these guys if we can get another engineer here. One more, and we should basically be able to build any building for free, which would be swell. Uh, Snorri Grand in hand, I believe. You can't quite hit the Grayling moat. All right, that's fine. That's fine. You're gonna go into raiding stance right here. Are you not able to reach it with raiding stance? Wait, go right to there. Okay, fine. If we manually move, you'll be able to do it. It's only 175, so it really ain't worth all that much, but it's better than nothing. We could also, if we wanted to, start moving one of the Dragon Slayers out, but for now, at least until we get more units in this army, I think we'll keep them there, and... 
once we start traveling through Varg territory, going up north, hopefully at the same time as we start attacking the Varg from the, uh, uh, with the statue Jarbeard as well, uh, then we can transfer the unit. Or perhaps by then we'll have additional capacity and we'll just not need to do so at all. Anyway, though I do feel like that army would get more mileage out of a, uh, uh, out of another unit of Doomseekers, rather than perhaps another Dragon Slayer. With the heroes not buffing other units, it just doesn't feel all that worth it. Anyway, Winter Pyre, you're actually quite far, and I think regardless of the cost reduction, at Tier 1 it's not that expensive, so we'll upgrade the Dwarf Outpost here. And hopefully by the time we come back, we'll have other stuff to build with the Engineer Corps. Uh, next up, I believe we're good, so we can skip, 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 damage building outpost, whatever. Uh, we will not want to collect income anywhere here. We should also transfer the Forest of Decay to our allies. Should we do it right now? Yeah, because we don't know what these guys are going to do. Yeah, let's just transfer, the, transfer them to the Forest of Decay right now. Screw it, why not? I'm almost tempted to start taking their money because they're being kind of useless right now, but... Uh, uh, maybe they can recover. Who knows here? Have the Forest of Decay. <laughs> It's a very, it's a very interesting dynamic the way that uh, we've got this going. But anyway, uh, skip the rest of that and in the turn, and let's keep on going. All right, what are you gonna do, Datsu? Please don't raise the Tower of Flies. I have a feeling that they're just going to go around raising these territories, which will mean we'll have to uh, reoccupy them and retransfer them. Oh. There are in hidden beast paths, eh? Uh, that's not the worst thing in the world. Just can't really... Hmm, we don't really want them ambushing Malachi, so go right here beside the Tower of Flies. We know they're still around here, and they should appear and may even be in our way. Hmm, we certainly don't see them now, though. Uh, can we raise a new lord here? In this army? We can. Obviously, that'll be very costly, but we could do so temporarily. My thinking is this. Wait. Uh, it's still going to take two turns to build the Doomseekers. I wanted to transfer some more Doomseekers to that other army, which, uh, which ain't quite going to work, is it? Also, I don't think we need these Thunderers anymore because we're just going to replace them with Gyrocopters so we can get rid of them all together. Or Gyro Bombers, rather. As much as I like the Thunderers, I just don't think they really have a place in this army. There's just not enough of a line. And they also aren't really buffed by anything that we do here. I mean, yes, technically the Engineers buff them, but they're not a war machine. Let's face it. Sorry, Thunderers. You've been around for a long time, but we'll, uh, we'll get you back elsewhere. And another army, I'm sure, will have plenty of Thunderers, Grudge Rakers, and Regular kind alike. I actually didn't... I wasn't super happy with the uh, Grudge Raker and Regular Thunder army I ended up building in my Belagar campaign. I wonder if uh, we can do better with it here. The non-SFO version, because Vanilla does tend to have a, a little bit of an overpowered strength. Trick. Anyway, we'll uh, get the uh, we'll get the next gyro bomber in here afterwards. But for now, just save the money for a single turn. Also, getting closer and closer to that reinforced airship frame. I can I can taste those sweet sweet uh, thunder barges. <laughs> All right, you're gonna jump to the tower crack, please. Like so, and then we're gonna build this up for a mere 900, and we might as well upgrade the granary here as well. We need the growth after all. Uh, by the time we get to Sarl and Campen and Bay of Blades, we might be able to upgrade them as well. Nice. And, oh! Masters of Stone and Steel, you should be in Empower the Guilds. Whoops. Didn't need to do that. I've done that by accident at some point. Oh well, not a big deal. Uh, Stotchel. I was going to send you to the Blighted Grow, but it looks like they're rebuilding their army here. Okay, fine, just, just do this again. It's free XP, I guess. Auto Resolve. <laughs> Sorry, Stachel. And uh, Occupy. Honestly, after all this, it's starting to feel like we will need all those extra uh, Demon Slayers. You're still able to globally recruit for one turn the Dwarf Warriors, though. Which is great, because we can simply do this and this. 
and recover them both. The Longbeards are unfortunately badly damaged until we can get a hero in here that's going to have to stay. But it's worth a thousand gold, especially as the with the upkeep gone from those two units, and we're a little bit better. In better shape, I mean. Lords in Waiting will give us physical resistance for miners, dwarf warriors, and longbeards, and then Hack and Slash will buff them up further. Then Mr. Hagambor Uluk, Rune of Wrath and Ruin, and... Mm, max out Rune of Wrath and Ruin. And then Rune of Slowness as well. And we'll do Rune of Oath and Steel and Forge Fire and everything else. I mean, we'll do everything there, but you know. Uh, Bernie, what level? Level 8. We need Iron Beard. And as fast as we can get for all of those Iron Drakes. But for now, wait, what do you get at level 12? Just buffs for you personally, right? Nothing crazy. Oh, well, the Glittering Scales ain't too bad. Hmm... But I'm not sure it's worth saving for, so we'll just go straight to Heart to Hit, maybe to Foe Seeker, and then save a few points after that. Alright, well, that I'm happy with. Snorri, you should be able to hit the Grayling Moot now, and to Grayling Moot ye shall go. And I'll resolve this as well. A little bit of damage on all, or, well, not all, but a decent amount of the Slayers. Another Stone Mason. Okay, fine, just keep that Stone Mason. Just keep it. Legendary Battle Unlocked. Goblin's Monstrosity. Oh. Uh, hello. What did I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. G -g Give me a minute here. Yeah. And unlock this one. Arachnorok Trophy. Enables poison attacks for Slayers and stock for Slayers. Eh? Interesting. What do we have here? Uh, that doesn't look too concerning for Malachi's army. We're gonna fight this. Not right now, but uh, this episode we're definitely gonna fight this. I've been waiting to get another one of these up and running. Also, one more turn until we can start the next adventure as well, which will be nice. Hey, you, sir, build yourself another trinket maker here. We're gonna empower those guilds some more. The chaos corruption is already dropping quite nicely. Though I do want to double check that we have any more ancillaries that will reduce chaos corruption by anything. Uh, another dwarf and tattooist, for example. And hey, if anybody should have a bunch of dwarf and tattooists, it's the Slayer Army. They, sh they should have like a follower train of tattooists. Uh, you're nearly ranked 12. You're ranked 12, yes. Very nice. Distinguished Slayer into... Mm, do we need all three points? now? just two. Uh, worthy Foe gives damage. This gives us... Fighting against Demons of Chaos. We'll need this, but we won't need this against Norska. So let's go Army of One, Slayer of Many, Demon's Bane, and then Death Wish. Bonus versus large plus 10 for Slayers, Slayer Pirates, and Giant Slayers. Then bonus versus infantry. Even more bonus versus infantry for Doom Seekers. Yeah, we need, we need at least two more Doom Seekers in this army for it to make sense. Which will work. Two more Doom Seekers will put us at 20 out of 20, and then one more Giant Slayer to replace the Dragon Slayer, meaning once we get the upgrade for Mr. No, wait, where's Malachi? Once we get the upgrade for Malachi's airship to increase the recruitment rank out of the signal system, we can build all three at once. It'll take two turns of kind of sitting there, and then we'll ferry them back, because let's face it, we're, we're using the Horde to pump out Infantry and stuff. We're supposed to pump out military units rather than economy, which is what we're doing everywhere else. Help it. I'd love to upgrade that reinforced gate, but I think... I think you can hold against most regular full stack, so I think there's no need for it right now. Mountains of Nalfari, you're probably going to be corrupt for at least one more turn. And Bilious Cliffs, you are going to rebel eventually. And in fact, we may want to immediately give you up to uh, to Boris. Here you go. Enjoy, Boris. He's still alive. He's still kicking. <laughs> oh, it's 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 bizarre. Oh, it looks like Archeon has taken the Howling Citadel. As Boris loses ground here, he gains ground by virtue of us. But Malachi is moving this way now, and uh, he will reclaim all that has been lost. Anyway, though not lost by us. Stop making Mal uh, Malachi do everything for you. Uh, skip the rest of this uh, post. Double check Diplo, which we haven't done this turn. Rare for me not to do Diplo for a turn, but here we are. Uh, Nordland, ooh, Reichland's ready for a non-aggression or a defensive alliance. Yes, please. Hmm. Nordland is in pretty bad shape, and they're fighting the Fikendites. Fikendites are doing really well. We need to move down here, ain't we? 
Carl will at least give us a vision. Yeah, I go straight to military alliance. Uh, Carl will at least give us a vision down here, which is swell. Nordland, I don't care about. Peace with Hagrief. There's still a lot. Huh. Wait. Is there any reason to keep them alive? Who's on the other side of them here? Uh, Slanashi Corruption. That's the Rapturous Excess, is it? I don't remember what the faction up here now. Or is the Rapturous Excess in the south? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. It's a little mini Slanashi faction. Uh, they're probably not going to fight each other, though, are they? Mm, we can ignore that. Hey, Kuhan, you're still alive, I see, as well. Uh, Arguelon is surprisingly willing to be friendly. Uh, Vissenland and Nalm. Can we do a trade agreement with you? Not quite. Would you be willing to join the war against the Fecundites? No, uh, not at all. Not at all, Elspeth. Okay, well, you should be, uh, should be at least somewhat willing to fight the- Whoa. I did the wrong thing. Uh, you should be at least somewhat willing- What the heck is this? Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Let me just see here. Minus, uh, minus eight versus plus six. For plus six, they're willing to give us 1,200 gold. For minus eight, similarly, we have to pay them 17,000. Wow. Wow, diplomacy. Real fair. <laughs> oh, game. Why are you like this? Uh, you still like us if uh, I'll just do the stupid non-aggression pack. You know what? No, you know. We're not gonna. We're gonna wait until we can do a trade agreement with you. We'll do non-aggression with Kuhan instead, who frankly are probably not going to pay us a lot anyway. Alright, we'll wait on Vissenland and Nuln and the rest. Probably not much purpose to the defensive lines of these guys. Especially since they're already at war with the Fecundites, which is the main thing that I would have wanted to do to try to get them to... Uh, uh, to try to get them to uh, do that. Anyway. 8%. Yeah, that's not... Yeah. <laughs> that's not happening, is it? Oh, well. Not a big deal. At least not for us right now. And I believe with that, we're ready to end the turn and hunt down those darn beast jerks. Let's see if anybody attacks us or comes around. We also really need another army to deal with those fecundites. Counteroffer. Trade agreement still now. We'll get you. We'll get you eventually, Elspeth. Especially now that we're friends with the Mayan Empire. Alright, is that Beastman army visible? I see... Hong? Have they revived or something? Where are you from? Are you here? Are you a rebel army? You have no settlement. Okay, well, we'll just destroy them, and if we get ambushed by the Beastmen and their beast paths on the way, well, then that's what'll happen. Kill Tong. Declare war. Don't ask allies. Archaeon... Oh. Wait, did Archeon revive them? Oh, I guess we're awfully close to Archie. Uh, I guess it's now time to join the war against Archeon. He's only at war with the Ursan Revivalists, and I was not taking their money. But for this, it's only 1.6k. Now, fine, keep your damn money. <laughs> all right, game, all right. Declare war, call allies to help, go. If we get ambushed, we'll have to fight our way out of it. Oh, still don't see that beastman herd. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I should have upgraded these guys, but... Uh, well, I'm just gonna assume that they don't have a full stack and... Hopefully we'll survive. We really need to keep our cannons alive. And that's the main thing. I'm worried about their crew. Now, if these were goblin hewers and we got ambushed in that nature or in that way, then the enemy would have just died trying to kill the artillery crew. But in this case, we got to preserve our precious high level cannons. Go. Alrighty, here we go. We are ambushed, and, uh, well, some might say that's unfortunate uh, to some degree, but A, we expected it. B, the ambush isn't really a threat to our air units, at the very least. And C, I can just imagine the Slayers uh, when getting ambushed. They would probably be so damn happy about the whole thing. Oh, we're surrounded? Good. And just uh, axe your way uh, through every direction. Anyway, the issue here is, of course, the 
rear of the column has our cannons. I feel like it's a little bit odd that every army seems to travel in this game such that there's not a single unit in rear guard. There's a uh, rear guard supposed to be the most dangerous position for a reason, but also to protect your artillery train. And uh, yeah, maybe they should make an adjustment of, of that and uh, keep a couple melee units if they exist in your army back there. But anyway, uh, kind of like Grendel's defenders in Elspeth's army uh, or in uh, the new Empire forces that uh, uh, that specifically defend artillery pieces and buff them. But anyway, uh, we've set this up so that there are enemy units or uh, Ungors charging directly for our cannons. Our cannons are going to go straight down the middle of our force into the piles of slayers and hopefully hide among them while the slayers hack the enemy apart. The gyrocopters and bombers alike are going for those Ungor spears and once again trying to protect the cannons from, uh, well, and doing their thing. Now the interesting slash odd thing about this is the enemy has one, two, three, four, five, six Cygors. Where did they get those Cygors in the like one to two turns it took us to get here? I don't know, but they certainly found a lot. A lot of them and we're going to have to deal and that's going to be dangerous both to our flyers and to our slayers who are going to uh, get hit by a uh, lots of those uh, thrown rocks from the Cygors. Anyway, in the background we've seen some of our gyrocopters and bombers land. They simply charge the enemy units of the uh, the Ungors that were annoying our cannons just to distract them for a little bit longer. Out here, Malachi has for once engaged in melee attacks and is facing off against the Cygor here. He should be able to take a Cygor one-on-one. -on -one. Though his melee defense is, well, 61. It's not horrible, but it could be better. We are buffing him up with Kelping Hand via Felix, and Felix is doing the same thing here and facing off against another Saigor. We simply don't want these guys to firing, or to firing, uh, to fire, and thus need to distract them. Out here, our cannons are still alive. The Young Wars are still fighting, but it looks like the Slayer Pirates are holding them off. Out here, we've sent in our flyers to start annoying the other four Saigors that we need to send some slayer pirates out there to uh, hopefully block them as fast as we can. The uh, cannons are going to try to peel away from the main enemy formation such that they can start firing back at the enemy Cygors. Looks like the Ekron miners are having a pretty tough time against the uh, enemy minotaurs and have taken a uh, bit of damage here. If I can select them here, there we go, losing about 30% of their HP. Slayer pirates still holding. And it looks like for now our cannons are safe. And these are only Ungors back here at least, so uh, they're probably not going to win in melee. Even with the Slayer Pirates being, uh, let's say, okay in melee. Alrighty, a few more bombs coming down from our gyro bombers to help out to clear the way uh, against those units of the uh, of Ungors. Our Slayer Pirates arrive and these two units of Saigors stand close enough together so that they can distract both and stop them from firing. Our cannons have begun to fire as well with the help of the uh, gyrocopters starting to knock uh, the Saigor to the ground, or at least the first Saigor to the ground, and that must be real frustrating. There we go, keep firing away, keep staggering them and preventing them from firing. There we go, are you knocked down? You are knocked down, but you should be dead shortly. Looks like he's in an invincible frame once he gets back up, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, certainly a little bit of overkill happening when uh, giant units get staggered and then are invincible for like several seconds while you continue using your ammunition. All right, next Saigor. Uh, and the Spirit of Grunny has arrived and is uh, hovering overhead, firing cannons at Saigor with the help of uh, our own cannon fire. And down goes yet another. Lovely. Two down over on this side. These guys are in trouble as well as the Slayer Pirates have distracted them long enough and can now peel away and allow our Air Force and our cannon in combination to knock those Saigors down. Out here, Malachi has defeated his own Saigor and there's one more left uh, being chased down now by Malachi and Felix alike. Gotrek we haven't really spotted in this particular battle, but he dueled and either killed or forced to rout the enemy lord wherever he was in there, but I thought the Saigors were just a little bit more interesting. And 
anyway, with the fall of these last Cygors, our Air Force can peel away after knocking them out, of course, and can start heading over this little mountainous area towards the enemy reinforcements. As reinforcements there are, they are the uh, uh, the uh, Norskin units that are moving in, but fortunately, far too late to keep the uh, uh, to keep their beastmen friends alive, or probably beast fiend friends in this particular case. Alrighty, more bombs coming in from those gyro bombers, and they keep firing into the backs of the enemies. There we go, Ekron miners chucking their blasting charges in combination with the bombs and the cannons firing away. And it looks like at the very least the enemy fast movers, four units of marauder horses and a unit of uh, poison doggos is out. We still got a lord, a unit of trolls, and four units of uh, marauder hunters coming in. Oh wow! Marauder Hunters have 80 range. You know who else has 80 range? The Goblin Hewer. So you're telling me a guy, just like a random guy, can chuck an axe as far as a literal axe chucking machine? I feel it needs at least 20 more range. You, we gotta, it, it range. Its range needs to be bumped up to like 100. There's no way that it can't chuck an axe further. It just feels a little bit odd to me. I'm 99% sure it has 80 range as well. Wait, so that tells me... wait. So it actually has less range than javelin throwers, who I believe have, I want to say, a hundred range on them. Hmm. Any uh, enemy horsemen left alive? Okay, so these are marauder horses of the regular kind. I want to see marauder hunters with javelins, though, which the enemy doesn't have. But anyway, uh, let's move towards those throwing axes coming over the cliffside. Must be a scary sight to see the uh, to see the spirit moving towards you. Trolls booking it on out of there with cannons uh, firing at them from above and below. And here we go. With the Saigors out of the way, though they were a big threat for the two minutes until the uh, uh, the Spirit of Grugni could be summoned. And the damage was going to come in from the ambush itself, not the reinforcing units after. Here, down come the bombs from the bombers and the airship alike. The cannons are ripping those poor Norskins apart. And it looks like they begin to turn and uh, the ambush itself has been turned upon its head. And the battle is ours. Very nice. Who's ambushing who here? <laughs> Man, I can't believe we managed to keep all four of our uh, of our artillery units survive or alive. It's uh, the uh, gyrocopters and bombers being able to react so quickly, much quicker than the melee infantry, allowed them to uh, force the uh, own enemy melee troops away long enough for us to uh, ensure that our artillery survived. Down goes the last Norskin. Beautiful. Alright, a really fun battle, but what the heck was that? Why do they have six Cygors in their bloody army? I certainly wasn't expecting that to be the case. They have mm, almost as many Cygors as they have Ungors, and no Gors to speak of. Uh, AI doing bizarre things once again. And uh, I'd love to take the money, but I think we don't know... Well, wait, both of these armies are destroyed, aren't they? So we don't actually need to heal, do we? Yeah, we're fine. Uh, execute and loot once more, and I'm gonna hope that we have a little bit of travel time left. Execute and loot. Now, oh, we can go to the Port of Secrets and occupy it and transfer it to our allies. Hopefully it doesn't cost too much to get it. And hey, another student. Nice. And, huh. Wait, this time we got the students... Oh, well, I guess we completed the technology this turn. How did you survive? You were in... Wasn't, wasn't this army in March stance? Shouldn't it have been fully destroyed regardless of whether it was... Uh, um, regardless of whether it was... Reinforcing or not? Weird. Uh, we'll occupy the Port of Secrets. Yes, we'll pay and we'll trade it to our allies. And yes, we can... Hmm. Look, we can order them to do it, but I, frankly, I think we'll do it. It's better to do it this way. And an encamp stance outside so that this guy can't do anything about it. Or can he? Actually, that's a question. He might be able to immediately occupy it, because... Damn it. All right, fine. Uh, for one turn, we're going to get Rorik Cromson in here. Oh, this game's going to be like that. 
And just to double check, we can't build anything here. And we can't build out of the Circle of Influence, can we? I... Or can we? Does the, is the Spirit of Grugni still able to move while you're building? Because I really want these Doomseekers for our friend. I'll give it a try. We can just cancel them if we can't move what? after. Recently colonized, that's fine. Campaign movement disabled one recruiting. Yeah, so the spirit can't move even though the enemy is, uh, even though our allies in the circle, eh? Mm, well, that's a shame. Yeah, but like this you can move. All right, fine. But you still have to stay here so that these guys don't reclaim the Port of Secrets. Uh, we'll destroy this in the next turn, then we'll head to the Crystal Spire to hopefully head off Archaeon's advance, retake the Howling Citadel, and start moving through their stuff. Uh, we also probably want to get out of the Chaos Wastes relatively soon, because we will eventually get that debuff on our entire army if we, well, let it. Uh, so that's certainly something to consider. For now, though, you head to the Blighted Grove and finish off Malice for good. And not in the way that Tarkan would have it. So then I should giggle. Auto resolve. And... Dilute and Occupy again. This price will probably... Okay, I'm not sacking it, though. <laughs> uh, not again. Although, it's a decent amount of cash. Mm. I mean, it's not like you have anywhere to go. We're not going to redeclare war right now. Go for it. Sack it. Sack it, and the Sephirtinsi bit of attrition hit him again. Next turn. A little bit of cash is worth our time. As long as these guys don't declare war immediately, but I just don't think that they will. We're still negative in terms of income, so we need to, well, make use of every little bit we can. Now you need to go to... Well, I guess Bay of Blades is the only place to go, so Bay of Blades, you shall go. Bay of Blades, let's upgrade you for 200. Nice and cheap. Uh, though the Fekindites are probably coming this way. Very much so. They're causing absolute havoc in Kislev right now. Man, we have to we have to solve all the Kislevites' problems, don't we? Wh whichever Kislevite faction it is, we have to solve their problems. Oh well. As uh, Sonori. Can't reach the monolith of Burakil Bloody Hand this turn. Are you able to raid for a turn? Go here. And, ah, Wolfric's return. Well, so well. You can raid for a turn, and then we'll hit the Monolith, which has some defenses in addition to Wolfric's army. He's still not on his uh, Mammoth, though. Uh, you guys are still level 11? Then we'll level you up before we fight. All right. Well, that looks good to me. Let's see about uh, our buildings, or whether there are any buildings that we can build at the current time that won't cost us too much. Uh, Grayling Moot is where... It's a little far. I'm tempted to say just upgrade this. Nah, just upgrade it. No, we're not going to go that far yet. It's probably better to just upgrade Doomkeep to Tier 3 and then hold off on uh, traveling all this way. We'll have to travel back around to Krakadrak. Nalfari Plain might be reachable within the next turn or so, so we may want to just wait for it, though. And upgrade it for free. Or effectively free. And then I guess we'll loop back around to the Altar of Spawns or the Monolith of Flesh. It doesn't really matter which one because we have to upgrade one of them to Tier 2. And Sarlan Kama to Tier 1. Yes. Engineer Cork has lots and lots to do. The rest of this I'm happy with. Also, did we not set up... What were we going for? Guilds. We were going for this. Thane's Authority. Keep on going for that. Well, I guess get scrutinized guild leaders for now. High King's Commandment, additional 5%, and Masters of Steel and Stone, additional 5% reduction to recruitment costs. Which is fine, but not something we really care about at the current time. Alright, rest of that looks good to me. Building upgrade available in Malachi's army. Not this turn, but next turn, yes. Next level of the airship will uh, come around and turn. Will anybody attack us? Will anybody be able to attack us? What do you want? Uh, well, you want us to join the war against the Barrel Legion? Sure, but not right now. We're busy. I'm sure you need all the help you can get, and frankly, we're probably weakening those uh, factions by uh, doing the defensive alliance with them. And these guys did come around, out of resolve. And that army should be destroyed. Nice. Or Tong should be destroyed. Nemesis Crown, another vision. The crown lies in a region owned by Visenland and Nuln. Great for those two. Uh, 
We do want to head down to the Tower of Torment, but for now we'll head to the Crystal Spire and help Boris retake the Howling Citadel. He's going there himself, but that doesn't mean that he'll actually be able to do so. And Malika, you can build up the reinforced airship frame. And I don't believe there's anything else that you need to or want to build. Oh, I did want to get that other gyrocopter, but I guess we can... I mean, I guess we can do it next turn. It's always another next turn. Also, we can start the next one of our adventures. And I'm gonna say it's this one, probably. A, because it's considerably cheaper, and it's not that I don't want organ guns, it's just that, uh, well, this is cheaper. And we can upgrade the gyrocopters, which we are using. Though, to be fair, the upgrades here are nothing crazy. Start adventure. Uh, is there a dilemma here, R1? A, free money. Uh, is there a dilemma? Form a trade agreement with a Kislev or Cathay faction, working on it. Fight five battles against Chaos Dwarfs, three battles, fight a convoy army. And kill a thousand enemies with... Oh. Could have done that a million times by now. Uh, adventure begins. Well. Alright. Diplomacy. Let's see if we can get that trade agreement going. Arguelon's still reasonably happy about us. Uh, Kuhan, nearly ready to trade. Vissenland and Null, non-aggression pact. Now we can do trade agreement. Oh, they must have lost their main stack. They're fighting a lot of vampires, and by the looks of it, having a fairly tough time of it. Your money we will take, though. Uh, let's see. Midland also wants to trade. Most likely they'll die to the feckin' knights. Uh, Kuhan, I would have rather to trade agreement with you. Should have started with that and would have been able to. But do this. They'll eventually ask for a trade agreement anyway. Uh, Midland. Yeah, sure, why not. Even if he dies, he can give us money in the meantime. Try to keep us as close to positive income as possible. Uh, minus 622. <laughs> it's so weird because it feels like it's, it's it feels like playing chaos. And ooh, these guys are coming north with Felman Ingerson as well. Man, I wish we could send our Slayer army down there, but alas, we cannot. Hmm. Here's a question. Do we attack the enemy settlement? Now, if we don't attack the settlement, we'll have to auto-resolve them. Eh. But then again, this guy's around. Can we even reach this? No, we can't even reach it. We suffer attrition here as well. Alright, go into encamp stance. Go right here. Nah, I shouldn't have bothered with the... Uh, uh, with the raiding stance. It's gonna mean a lot more enemies to fight through. Hey, you guys are all saving your points as well. And I believe we have no items to give you, alas. Uh, you... Speed, Rune of Grimnir, this is all fine, but I guess we're gonna get you hard to hit. Or physical resistance. Actually, your melee defense is reasonably decent right now. Five, seven, you know what, let's do one point in Stubborn Defiance and two points in Hard to Hit. I think that's a nice middle ground. All right, Mr. Zufbarden. You are going to go right here through Sarlan Encampment on towards Nalfari Plain. Sarlan Encampment for 200. And then Nalfari Plain for 200. Beautiful. And when we can do buildings in two places in one turn, ah, oh, we have to go all the way back to Krakadrak now. We need that tier 4 upgrade ASAP. It's pretty far. Very concerned about this, though. Did I build a def- we have no defenses at the Bay of Blades either. We need to knock out Wolfric and then get over here. Scorpion, help. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move everybody else in the meantime. You take this over for good now. Auto resolve won't kill anybody and occupy. Lovely. With that, head grief is destroyed. Don't collect the income and eh, keep the military building. We might need to give it to our friends. Who are you at war with? You're at war with Nagarond. Nagarond should be reasonably strong, and we're at war with right now, and they don't want to peace out. Interesting. All right. Well, probably there is good reason to attack the Varg here and then sail on down. If we can have... If. Big if. If we can have Stotchel do this, then in theory, Snorri could do this and then loop back around to deal with Festus before he kills the entire Empire. Why is Festus always doing so good? Aurorik, you are only here for a turn. 
I don't think we need you anymore, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna march Stancy this way. I want to see if an army is approaching. I'm gonna act as a scout. Is there an army here? There is no army there. Alright, you have served your purpose now, sir. It was not a long purpose, but it was a useful one. Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> Alright, uh, we can transfer the Port of Secrets to our friends here as well. Don't take their money. They'll need it to build things. At least one Kislevite faction will remain alive as long as we have territory in the Northern Chaos Wastes. Uh, Stachul. I was about to say you might want to rebuild or replace one of your uh, Dwarf Warriors, but you're actually good. Uh, Ear of the Council does nothing for you. Obdurate is fine. Obstinacy, probably the way to go. Gotta get that Vigor Loss Reduction. And I still haven't decided on these. I really like the idea of the missile resistance offered by this, but the range is quite short. Hmm. Missile block chance, physical resistance. So tanky, pretty, tanky for everybody. I will continue considering. Uh, Bernie is going to need a few more levels before he can upgrade the uh, fire drake slash iron drake. So let's also get forge fire for you, sir. I'm excited to get the, start putting those runes into action. Actually, speaking of, I do believe we should have another one of these guys available. Yes. Determined, ancient, and tough. I don't like any of those. Eh, there's another one with the ancestral blood grugne. Hmm. And that would make buildings free, but we don't have another engineer capacity right now, so I guess we'll have to wait on that. Uh, public order, falling, falling, falling. Mountains of Hell, Monolith of Flesh and Altar of Spawns. That's the way we're moving back around. How close is the Monolith of Flesh? Fairly far. Best way is to march stance down here. I assume you don't need to go further towards Doomkeep. At least not right now you don't. Alright, that's fine then. We can deal march stance down here and then march or jump down here and then like this all the way back through to crack a drag to get that upgrade then briefly to help it to upgrade its uh, its defenses makes sense to me all right nobody else needs to move assuming i don't remember whether we did all the diplo this turn or last turn but it looks like it was this turn just judging by all this we could do a defensive alliance with uh, with these guys just to take their money though if they're gonna die anyway all the other Imperials would be reasonably happy with it, by the looks of it. Watch Durtho attack one of them. Uh, it's a possibility, but do it anyway. Free money is free money, and the more vision we have of the Fecundites is better. The better, generally. Oh, Castelton, you're going to Longship Graveyard. Uh, I was about to say you're welcome to it, but are you? Not entirely sure. Man. I'm not even sure we can reach the uh, first level of this. The amount of grudges the game wants is absolutely insane. Man, I, they came, well, they went completely overboard. With it. I'm surprised nobody who was testing it uh, prior to uh, the game's release or the uh, version's release said anything about this. Maybe nobody played uh, Malachi. Who knows? Wait, but the big channels, they all got access way, way earlier. I blame the big channels for this. I would have said something if I had gotten early access. <laughs> Sigvald will declare war. Ah, okay. Well, I guess uh, Stachel Jarbeard ain't leaving. Don't call your allies to help. We'll deal with all of this. We'll burn them all. He can fight us and he can fight Nagarod. We'll see about that. Can he fight the fire, though? Uh, Confederation, Northern Provinces and Imperial Wardens, uh, Agol and some other little garbage Norse confaction be united against us, fine. Where the heck is Archaon? What is he doing? He's only at war with the Ursan Revivalist. I haven't seen him for ages. We saw him like 20 turns ago once, and now it's probably just been his little crappy minion armies. Are you gonna run? Are you gonna run far enough is the real question. Uh, all right. There's a little bit of a bug where, you know what, I'm not gonna risk it. Can't reach this anyway. Uh, there's a little bug where sometimes movement range gets screwy if you, uh, uh, if you get a new unit. I wanted those gyrocopters, but I'm not gonna risk it. 
decent amount of cash for that. Nice. Alrighty, and you can reach this and destroy this little army. Beautiful. Do we need to fight this? Nah, there's nothing there. The fight against uh, Wolfric is going to be much, much more difficult. This is not worth our time out of resolve. And... I guess loot and occupy. Uh, wait, it was a tier 2, so we're going to take it to tier 1 no matter what we do. We're not fine. Then, sir, leave the place, go into and camp. Boris, you can have the Howling Citadel. Return it to you. Still not taking your money, though. All right, there you go. Uh, ooh, Northern Provinces. You want trade? Yes, please. You want military access and non-aggression pact? Yes, please. There's certainly some stuff. Ooh. Thunder barges and sky junks together? Yes, sir. Please survive. Please, Cafe. Please be the one campaign where you actually manage to live. Hey, sky, uh, Gyro Bomber, or Skyhammer specifically, is up and running now. I guess we might have to get rid of the Ekron Miners to replace the uh, replace them with the Skyhammer and the regular Gyro Bomber. And then we'll get rid of the regular Gyrocopters and replace them with Thunder Barges later on. I'm not sure about Ulrika in here. We're, we would get so much more mileage out of a second engineer, though. Oh, Ulrika, you've reached this, though. Melee Defense Defending... Really not useful for Malachi's army, is it? Fire resistance, funnily enough, would be nice for the uh, fire army. Imbuement blinded for accuracy plus 90%. You can blind jerks that you shoot at. Not bad. I do like the spell resistance for the army. Uh, chaos attrition reduction. Vampire Slayer gives immunity to psychology, which... Wait, our... Gyrocopters are n both immune to psychology already, so that would be... Oh, actually, no. That, I, I should have checked that before, but it's too late now. Uh, battle Healing Cap for Ulrika herself, and Blood Forged gives us enemy leadership reduction casualty replenishment rate for Heroes Army. Though probably Malachi's own army is fine in that regard. Lightning Fast, massive amounts of missile resistance. Let's get some spell work. Oh, Confident all around her. And Penumbral Pendulum. All right, she's got some nice stuff. It's just not super useful in this army in particular. And if you're wondering why I haven't leveled stuff in such a long time here, it's just because, well, we haven't really had any useful... Uh, uh, we haven't had any proper battles here. Requisition and Zipbar 42 pounders. I do want the speed upgrades for the entire army. Hmm. And I haven't decided which of these we'll go for. It's probably still going to be ballistics calibration, though, just for the, uh, uh, just for the artillery. Now, you are a lot more fighty with the Grudge Raker than you are with the Snipey thing. Most of the enemies will probably die at range to this army, so yeah. For now, go ammunition. Good job. Hey, Malachi, you've reached level 30. Very nice. Okay, we're going to take a few moments to level things up this time around. Fine, fine, fine. Tradition and innovation. We have lots of air now. Uh, rally. Definitely get Morgrim's favorite for the cannons and Dowie firepower for the uh, gyrocopters and gyro bombers. And then stand your ground. Finishes us up. Well, now you giggle. Uh, next up, Gautrick and Felix. Felix, you... Yeah, I'm going to keep being bothered by Mark of Hish and Sigmar's ward, so I feel like we should get them. But for now, Deadly Blade, Foe Seeker, definitely Blade Shield. You seem so fragile. Everything keep no keeps knocking you around, sir. Uh, Moonmaker, Deadly Onslaught, Sigmar's ward. There you go. You, Gautrek. Don't really care about training. Don't really care about Ancestral Grudge, at least not for now. Let's get your Stubborn Defiance, Foe Seeker, and Blade Shield. Max out those defenses. Uh, you can always hit a little bit harder. Or we could get your Scarred Veteran. Because of the Blood Oath thing that you two have, you get more mileage out of this via your healing. On the other hand, the faster you kill, the less damage you take. So there's still that to consider as well. You know, Gotrek has no armor, so let's actually give him the Rune of Grimnir for that missile resistance, as I feel like he could... Uh, Probably use it. All right, next up, we have to prioritize the air distillery. The upkeep reduction should be quite nice. And then next turn, we'll uh, pop some gyro bombers in here. Huh, we could actually build them now if we wanted to. But until we're ready to get to that point, I think we're okay. Airship crew growth rate increase via the storage hold, yes. 
Signals network is fine, but it's not a priority right now. I don't think any of this is a priority at the current time. Ah, this will increase engineer capacity, and we do need to build it, but I think we hold off for now because, well, we have money to spend elsewhere. Ah, uh, Mr. Ziffbarden. Just to double check, you don't need to step on by anywhere here. No, it doesn't look like it, at least not for now. Head southward, northward. Over here, go to the monolith of flesh and then the altar of spawns. And then winter pyre, etc., etc. Ooh, forbidden citadel. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Forbidden citadel. There's a bunch of stuff to be built here. Uh, Toolmaker's workshop. Yes to iron smelter. And we're gonna have to do a refectory here because the public order is otherwise gonna get screwy. Winter pyre and monolith of flesh and other stuff. We'll get to ya. Alright. Nice. That's working out. How's Festus? Is he moving towards us or is he going to Norden? That's the real question here. What we really need is we need Erengrad to declare war on him, but I don't think they want to. Minus 11.5. Yeah, they're just not into it. Ugh, he is threatening the motherland. I feel like even if the Ice Court and uh, the Orthodoxy hate each other-ish, uh, they should uh, they should still both declare war on anybody that threatens the motherland. It's kind of Kislev's thing. Now, Sigvald. You're going to be a problem. And the reason you're going to be a problem is we don't know where you're going to attack from. I guess technically speaking, we're not yet at war with the Varg, but that doesn't mean they won't go through Varg territory to get to us. Hmm. And there's not much we can do about it. Go into encamp stance and start moving towards Sigvald. Ah, there he is. Uh, can you go into ambush stance? You can. You can suffer attrition, but you can. Still all 60%. There, yeah, 55% here. I'm willing to risk the attrition if we can get a nice ambush on these guys. It's not a great army, but, uh, well. The flame cannons would make short work of them if they were ambushed. You, I believe, were saving points for Fell-Handed Warrior and Ironbeard, so keep on doing so. Let's double-check items, but dwarfs don't get much in the way of items, so it's unlikely. All right, the Seed of Rebirth. Dotchel, Firebeard, like a Phoenix, Seed of Rebirth, Regeneration, sure. Not sure it's the best option for us, but, uh, well, do it anyway. All right. Rest of that I'm happy with. Snorri, at last, after all that, it is time to fight Mr. Wilfric and all of his uh, forces. He's built up a full stack here and a pretty nice one. By the looks of it, your slayers have their work cut out for them. Go. Hero victory indeed. Alrighty, should be a fun time. Go. Alright, here we go again. Those are some happy slayers, and Wolfric stands against them once more. And Wolfric has some wolves in tow, two weirkin, and I believe four skin wolf units as well. Uh, not counting any additional units that were in the garrison, but I didn't check. Anyway, they've got a lot of Norskins, wolves, and not so wolves alike to hack our way through. So let's begin. Skin wolves begin to charge forward and take a few hits from our goblin hewer and our slayer pirates, though they will move on in. We're not as wary of them damaging our artillery crew, mostly because, well, the artillery crew are still slayers and can fight in melee together with the pirates as needed. Though I am impressed that the enemy decided to charge the uh, skin wolves actually towards us rather than just continue backing away. It's a good sign. It's a good sign for this battle. But for now, and ooh, Wolfric uses his ability, it's gonna bounce, but fortunately it will bounce in the wrong direction. Would have been uh, bad if it repeatedly bounced in this particular area. And speaking of Wolfric, here comes uh, the man himself on his chariot, still not on his mammoth, and moving right into our pile of slayers. Still, he tried that last time and it didn't go so well, and I don't imagine it's gonna go so well here, as he's already lost half his HP within the first few seconds. He hits real hard. 
And huh, with that single charge, he managed to get 10,000 damage and 22 kills. Though it's combined with uh, him using his uh, uh, him using his sea fang ability, so hard to say what actually did what. No, actually, he's racking up kills. Yeah, see, got another. Uh, got another five kills or four kills and nearly a thousand damage on his chariot. Maybe it's not so bad after all. Yeah, look at that. Still doing damage. Well done, Wolfric. Uh, sending one of the giant slayers uh, flying and armless, alas. Well, if you don't have your arm, you can't hold your racks, and I guess that's a big problem uh, for a uh, for a giant slayer. And Wolfric may be a giant of a man, but he will still go down and, well, fall pretty hard. There we go. He's out. Our lords and heroes mobbed him and ripped him apart, and though he did manage to do damage, he probably should have done said damage together with the rest of his forces. Out over on on the left side, or the left ramp here, uh, we have the Axe Dispenser, which is firing away at this enemy unit of Marauder Hunters, or specifically, I think it's targeting the uh, platform. I was curious to see how much damage this thing might do to a building compared to, uh, well, a regular artillery piece or uh, any kind of range unit, and just out of curiosity. And it seems it does relatively little with each individual Axe Projectile. We can see that the uh, HP of the building is falling relatively slowly compared to the amount of ammunition expenditure here uh, but I did want to test that out just to see how effective it was and yeah we got 108 range on the uh, on the Marauder Hunters with Javelins but it is buffed by the uh, platform so there's that to consider anyway this thing should be going down and hopefully a few more axes will smash into the enemy forces as well i was hoping that the platform would die together with the units up above or up on up up upon it up upon it you know what i mean uh, with the goblin here firing at them, but eh, it's all right out here We still got them, our main forces fighting through some uh, marauder spears and great weapons Oh, those are marauder champions as well They might actually be a threat to some of our units and out here We have some reinforcements arriving some skin wolves and another marauder chieftain But fortunately we've kept plenty of units back to deal with it Alrighty, Garagrim in the middle of the enemy formation. We'll still have to be careful and watch out for damage from all of those great axes. And here comes Skin Wolves charging through our lines yet again. And now being followed by the Maw Herd of Blood Fjord. We are now targeting two of our units of uh, Goblin Hewers at it. And they took a single volley at it, but honestly, they didn't do that much damage to it. I guess the Enrage ability that they have, giving them 40% ward save, is uh, gonna keep them safe enough from taking damage from the Goblin Hewers. Good use by the AI, though, I gotta say. That worked out for them. And it will allow them to do additional damage to our Slayers, but we do still have ammunition for now at least. And on top of that, the Slayer Pirates are firing into the uh, into the big old mammoths as well. Who have now dropped to about a third, maybe even a quarter of their HP. Alright, well the battering ram mammoths are out, or at the very least are out for now, they're only routing not uh, shattered, and they've got a decent amount of HP uh, remaining, probably enough for another charge at least. We've still got plenty of marauders, champions, and not so champions alike to hack our way through. So that'll continue, and it does look like once again the uh, Doom Seekers are doing absolutely fantastic here. And got to love how bloody their attacks are. There we go, very, very nice. But of course, while we're not getting quite as good as we give, we are still getting with our units, a lot of them down to about half HP over on this side. Uh, though fortunately we're more or less full HP over on this side as we have uh, uh, the Doom Slayers lead another formation up the second ramp. And just so we can surround and attack the enemy. And Doom Slayers, you got this. This is a unit of regular Marauder Champions. Damn, this guy's got a lot of Marauder Champions on field. Starting to see more and more elite units, just like those random Saigors showing up in just ludicrous numbers. 
Alright, though unfortunately for Norska, it doesn't seem like they will have uh, too much time to play with their elite stuff, and we're unlikely to see any frost worms before Norska is completely wiped out. Not to worry, I think the interesting stuff that we will see will be uh, from the Chaos Dwarfs, as we do still have to journey through their territory to complete Malachi's victory objectives. Alright, there we go. Well, looks like the enemy uh, pile of Marauder Champions is overrun, and now it's time to do the same to the Marauder Berserkers behind them, though they do plenty of damage and we do still have to be wary of it. Uh, the Doom Slayers, uh, the Axe Dispenser, and Kiss My Axe working together with the Dragonback Slayers and have made it up this ramp. We've also cleared our way through the uh, main uh, ramp as well and have separated in our forces uh, to knock down this ramp and kill off all of the uh, Marauders with uh, throwing axes up there. Led by a few of our lords and heroes, while I believe we have a few of our other units simply peeling away and running the rest down. Nice. And our two Dragon Slayers are leading the uh, second blob of units, while Garagrim and our Demon Slayer, Snorri Granite Hand, are leading the other blob. It's all Slayer blobs, but it's working quite well. Minus, I suppose, the Goblin Hewers, which I don't think did all that much in this particular battle. It's honestly, oh, well, it's kind of hard to tell what they did in range now because uh, they've been in melee ever since they ran out of weapons. Or ran out of weapons. Well, I mean, they ran out of extra axes, so that's kind of, that's kind of the case, but, uh, <laughs> uh kind of ran out of extra axes to load into the goblin here, is what I'm getting at, but anyway, uh, they now join the melee with the rest of all the slayers, and help out, besides, I suppose they can act as an additional meat shield for the, uh, doom seekers, who are the ones doing most of the damage to the enemy infantry. And once again, I am thinking we should get a few more into this army, and we probably will. And just gotta pick the right moment for uh, for Malachi's army to actually recruit them. Out here we got a few more Marauder Hunters up on a platform, though we have another Doomseeker a unit, specifically the Brotherhood of Grimnir, a regiment of renown working away. And I'm sure that a barricade will fall shortly. The other ramp is also very much in trouble, our two Dragon Slayers uh, fighting together. Oh, I'm kinda... I'm kinda... Hmm. I kind of don't want to separate them now. Maybe we can build another Dragon Slayer to put into uh, uh, to put into Stachel's army. Well, they're sticking together, and they led the charge together into this uh, pile of enemy units, followed by the rest of our Slayers here. Barricade goes down, and the uh, Marauders and the Marauder Hunters uh, that were behind it and on it and get quickly ripped apart by our spin-to-winning uh, Brotherhood here. And there we go. Damn, this is bloody. And gotta love these, uh, gotta love these uh, melee armies that are full of uh, frenzied and damage dealers. Ooh, a few of our slayers drop into a marauder horsemen with throwing axes, but we're not even gonna bother in giving chase to them. Rather, we're gonna have the slayer pirates simply gun them down. Are huh? Are your shields working when you're turned around like that? I feel like they're not. And specifically from the front, so yeah, maybe you should turn around and uh, actually take a few of those shots upon your shields there, Marauder Horses. And if you're wanting to charge in, you can feel free to do that as well, but uh, you're not going to be better in melee than the Slayer Pirates are. And frankly, you're probably not going to be better in range than the Slayer Pirates are, so we're good either way. Uh, Girigrim has found himself another playmate here in the form of Ogren, the uh, Skinwolf Weirkin, though it looks like the Skinwolf is dropping in HP extremely quickly, and will attempt to book it on out of there as well. All right, with that, I do believe the battle is nearly ours. Yes, the bounce power is only about 70% in our favor, but there's not much left to the enemy. The other Werken has about, or is about to fall here as well, just trying to escape. And will get brought down by the Dragonback Slayers. 
Very nice. So just the uh, blob of enemies remaining here will rout, shatter, and the battle will be ours. There we go. There we go. Very, very nice fight as clearly we've taken a ton of damage. We can see the HP bars on almost all of our Slayer units uh, down to slivers in some cases like Kiss My Axe and the Doom Slayers here. Though they do have a decent amount of units still remaining. Uh, 10 to... Let's say 30% HP on pretty much every unit. Very nice. And good job to the Norskins for standing. But, uh, well, we took this the old-fashioned way without having to rely on anything too fancy. All right, there we go again. Poor, poor Wolfric. We, uh, he keeps building stacks and we keep slaying them and just as fast as he can build them. Uh, looks like Garagrim is dealing out plenty of damage due to his spin to win ability and uh, the Doomslayers uh, have won this particular fight, getting 28k damage and 324 kills. And of course the other Doomseekers following them. Uh, next would be the Dragonback Slayers Regiment to Renown, followed by the Basic Slayers and the Pirate Slayers as well. Uh, the Basic Slayers, unfortunately, quite fragile, uh, at least compared to the Doom Seekers, uh, due to their, I guess, higher model numbers and therefore easier, uh, uh, more li higher likelihood, I should say, of them dying. Anyway, a uh, nice little battle. We're really loving the Slayer army still. We are going to occupy it, though it is tempting to sack for all that cash. It is a Tier 3, and then we can capture it at. Which is pretty decent. And hello. Ha, huh, go figure. It starts with another uh, artillery building. Well, we may not have the ability to get Doom Seekers yet, but we can build ourselves a couple more Doom Hewers and put them into this army immediately. Frankly. Uh, let's be real here. Frankly, this army would be a lot stronger if we put a few cannons in here, rather than the Slayer artillery, which are. Eh. They're kind of a. Uh, but, on the other hand... Ooh, hello. Grudge removed. The Imgi of Chaos. Uh, that's the big grudge. That's the... Huh, go figure. Well, at least this will put us into the uh, second level. <laughs> Free 2.5k, and we're not even halfway there. We've completed a great grudge, and we're not even halfway through a single Age of Reckoning. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, what can you do? Rune stones recovered. Uh, cool down after underway network travel. Can we actually use the... We can't actually use the underway network. We don't have two points. But nonetheless, I am going to give this a read because I wasn't expecting to complete a, a great grudge. Be it written that the Council of Kings bore witness to this grudge declared by Thorgard Cromson, great king of Krakadrak, against all who threatened the realms of the Northern Dwarfs. The alliance between Thorgrim Grudgebearer and the Northern Clans is hereby invoked, beseeching all Dowie to march against the murderous warmongers of Norska. We must recognize the Northmen for what they are, ready supplicants to the Dark Gods who must be eradicated dedicated from these lands. So, well, runestones recovered, settled grudges. And just to double check, this was a legendary grudge, which should be at the end. Here it is. Completed. Lovely. A unique dwarf lord is added to your recruitment pool for destroying Cult of Pleasure in Nagarond. Harganath is already dead. Go figure. Uh, occupy Silver Pinnacle and Sealed Tombs. Build sealed tombs. I take it we don't have to be the ones to do that because everybody works on these together, which is lovely. Hmm. And just taking a look at these as to which ones are likely to essentially solve themselves. Talzin has been destroyed. What the heck is going on in the Wood Elf territory? I wonder if it's the Skaven or whether it's the Broken Axe Orcs that are doing that. It's interesting to see. Mulder and the Hell Pit are gone, but Scryer and Skaven Blight still stand. The Call the Miner's ability would be quite nice if we could manage to do that, though. If only we could have a quick way to get all the way down to Skaven Town and uh, deal with them there, but, uh, well, for now we don't. Anyway, I believe with that we are ready to end the turn once more. Nothing to be built here, but everything else is fine. Just double-checking the commandments everywhere and making sure that we don't get a... Uh, 
Uh, don't get a rebellion. I'm also hoping that this guy isn't going to besiege us here with his one freaking skin wolf. He very well might. I don't know. These guys have the one territory remaining now and really want peace, but we're busy. What is this? Oh, right. The Eyes of Grugne. Gr I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Grugne, but I'm still gonna say it as I say it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I think with that, folks, we're out of time. Sad though it may be. Um, once again, I'm really having a lot of fun with this campaign. Yeah, if we end the turn, Lothar will either fail or we'll either bump into our ambushing army or we'll probably attack us together with Sigvald, uh, with both armies at the same time. I assume there's another army here uh, if the ambush should fail, so I think that a battle is a coming. We really should try to get you some more items. I think next turn we'll, or next episode we'll also spend a little Oath Gold and pick up another rune for various armies, but including that one. Anyway, next time we will hopefully knock out the world walkers for good and start moving around this way. If the scaling allow us to ignore them, we might ignore them and just go directly for Festus. Though I suppose if we go through the Altar of the Crimson Harvest anyway, it would be pretty simple to take it, grab the island, land a longship, and then... Kill off a few of these guys before bouncing back towards here. We gotta shore up all of Norska, including the shore, and uh, build defensive uh, structures on every single uh, in every single area there, which will be quite costly. But that's what our architects are for. Anyway, calling it here. More Dawi to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.